Right. Hi, so today we have a wonderful company with us. We have Paula Pizarro on for our webinar and she's with a company in a very uh, booming industry that uh, is within the staffing industry. And this is a wonderful company that our firm has been with for many years now. Uh, they have a high net promoter score and they are wonderful with their franchisees. So I thought it would be great to have Paula on today. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Talanda. Yeah, so our goal today is to talk a little bit about what Pride staff, who they are, um, cover some of the basics, uh, to try to educate someone on you know, what it is about. Because I, I get the feeling staffing probably isn't the first thing most people think of. I know for me personally as a consultant now, I've been doing this six years, it's certainly not on the first of anyone's list. <laughs> but you're going to show us today how interesting it can become and uh, and show us everything that there is about the business model that is gonna make it a great brand. I'm happy to do that. So our agenda is we're gonna talk a little bit about who we are and some of our backgrounds, uh, what our roles are to help people take a look into franchising and pride staff, um, your brand and the business overview, what franchisors are looking for uh, in a good franchisee, Working with a consultant, should you work with one, what our role is, is franchi franchising right for you? Um, how to get awarded, that's always an important one. I think people sometimes miss that it is an awarding process. It's not just coming to the table with you know, a bunch of money and that's it. And then what the timeline is uh, that you, know, you can on average look at on how long it takes. So my name is Talanda Sideri. And I am a senior franchise business consultant or coach within the franchise consulting company. Um, before that, I was in franchise, uh, the franchise development firm Rhino7 with a brand called Scout and Molly's. And before this, I was a former franchisee of two brands in the service industry. I do a, a photography studio. I kind of keep it uh, on my creative side. And before all of this, I was in the marketing department at Sherwin-Williams. So if you want to connect with me, uh, that is my LinkedIn uh, link right there. And a fun fact about me is my father managed a McDonald's in the 60s and turned down an opportunity to own one. <laughs> so I mentioned that on, on some of these because I think it's a fun one because a lot of times people will ask me about the food industry. So Paula, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you for asking, Talanda. I've been in the industry for 40 years, right out of college. And, uh, you know, when I joined in... I know when I joined the industry, I was completely clueless about what it was all about. Yeah. I had no idea, you know, what a robust industry it is and how resilient it is and how blessed I would be to be in this industry for over 40 years. And so I started out um, right in a franchise, uh, worked my way up, um, ended up marrying a franchisee in another location, um, ended up running his franchises. Um, and then we sold them to the corporate headquarters. I was recruited to work for uh, the headquarters, and then we, um, I took off in my role in support in the field and trainer, and then franchise development. So I was with a company by the name of Snelling and Snelling. I was there a long time, and then I joined an organization by the name of Express, and so Express Employment Professionals. I was there for quite a while as well for 12 and a half years. I uh, had a great career at both companies, um, and then I was recruited away, and I ended up at Pride Staff. Um, who I've been with for over 13 years now. So I've been with three franchised staffing companies. Um, it is in my blood. I'm passionate about it. I make no apologies for that. I love it. Love what we do. Very nice. Can you tell us about your fun fact? Oh, yes. I am an avid college football fan. And my husband and I are season ticket holders at Auburn. We live across the country in California. But that's what airplanes are made for. So um, <laughs> I love, um, I love, you know, athletics and, and, you know, I think that people that are athletic lovers, you know, you don't have to be a player, but people who are competitive by nature tend to do really well in our business. Yeah. So exactly. I think that ties in to pride staff. Very nice. So as consultants here, what we do uh, is we're similar to an executive headhunter uh, realtors for business. Uh, we are paid by the franchisors. It's a free service to the clients and the fees do not change whether you went straight to the franchisor or whether you worked with our consulting firm. So we provide a lot of research information and resources and then a matching process 
uh, based upon your skill sets, your interest level, the, the amount you're comfortable investing, and then of course what's available in your area too. So then we would match you up with Pride Staff if that's something that uh, matches up with your goals. And again, like we said in the beginning, not a lot of people come to me and say, I want a staffing company. But I think we're going to find out just how interesting it becomes and how pleased franchisees are that they did choose this route and begin speaking with you. So my role, as I said, I do franchise matching. We determine if business ownership in franchising, first of all, is a viable option for the client. Uh, thoroughly analyze their unique goals and skill sets, provide that curated list of options. And then we advise and consult on all the aspects of the due diligence, the investigation, investigation uh, become their coach throughout the process. And uh, we also provide financial and legal recommendations if you get that far during the investigation. And the pride staff role is the actual investigation because I'm sure Paula, in the, your 13 years, you've found a lot of people want to ask me questions or other consultants when really you're the expert, you're the one that should be telling them everything there is about the business. So conduct the investigation process to learn all aspects of the business model. You guys will provide the financial information and assist with all validation calls with current franchisees. So some common questions we cover during the consultation uh, with me first is some of the pros and cons of franchising. We will walk through that. Um, is franchise ownership for you? Sometimes going through those pros and cons and asking some questions, we determine that maybe it necessarily isn't for everyone. How we conduct this franchise match, I walk through that process so that everyone understands why they are getting the list that they're getting. What should I be focusing on for business ownership? I think sometimes that's a big key factor. What are my goals? What do franchisors look for in franchisees? And when do I begin looking at funding? So some popular questions and hangups that people, without a doubt, every single client, I'm sure you can attest to many of these that you're gonna see here. This wouldn't work in my market. There's way too much competition. What if an employee or manager leaves, which is obviously where Pride Staff can come in. I've never done, and then you can insert an industry here, right? I have never done painting. I've never done staffing. I've never done, I don't, I've never owned a pet, you know, whatever it may be. What if I want out of the business? So what's, you know, what's the exit plan? I'm not ready to speak with the franchise or Tlanda, but can you tell me about, and that's where I have to say, no, you need to speak with Paula. And how much can I make? Um, I'll be asking that a little bit later. And I do have a blog post on my website about the franchise disclosure document in item 19. So we do address this here throughout. So some rules and guidelines and general points to follow. Only the franchisor can provide all the detail of the business model and the financials. Investigating a franchise is not making a business decision. You are only learning and evaluating. And I think I have found over the years um, I don't know about you with the clients that you work with, but it seems to take some of the pressure off and people don't have to feel that they're in this, I have to make a decision position. It's just more, I call it casually dating. And then that way everyone can feel a little bit more that there's some humor. It's a little bit more of a light mode and it allows people just to enjoy the process. If you can follow this process of the investigation, you're more likely to be awarded a franchise. Are you making phone calls? Are you keeping appointments? Are you engaged? Both sides are interviewing each other and both sides can choose to respectfully end the investigation if it's not a good fit. So my role is to help you get awarded. So a typical timeline, um, this isn't always the case, but you know, on average, we'll have, I'll have an initial call with the client. We'll go through, we'll do an in-depth consultation call where I will build their business model. And through that is where then I do the research to build up their franchise or matches. And then they can begin speaking with you and begin that investigation with the franchisors and go through that entire process, which, you know, some people, if they've done this before, it can take three, four weeks. Some people, you know, life happens, their current job, family issues, it can take, you know, longer. But it does come down to them receiving, hopefully, if they've conducted themselves properly and it's a good match, but receive an offer from a franchisor. So Paula, can you now tell us about Pride Staff and what your company looks for and what you're about? It is my privilege to do so. Before I move to that point though, Talanda, I'd like to tell you how important I think it is that an individual consults with a professional like you, that you're truly able to help that individual 
past a lot of concerns that they have, which are perfectly normal. And quite frankly, we'd all be worried if people didn't have oh, concerns absolutely. and they weren't cautious, right? But to have someone to really help you and give you advice um, that has worked with many different industries, um, is an expert in, in franchising, um, is, is such an amazing service and that it's totally free of charge to them and no pressure on your part. So right. um, I've been in their position. You, yes, exactly. yes. I just want to give you a big thumbs up on Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so moving to Pride Staff, let's move to the next slide, please. So Pride Staff is coast to coast. Um, we started out in California. Our headquarters is in California, which, by the way, is very beneficial, especially in today's world. Yeah, it looks because amazing. California is we're right in the middle of California and Fresno. Uh, okay. Farm country. <laughs> but um, the reason I say it's beneficial is California is a very employee friendly state. And because of that, we have a very buttoned up risk management department um, that stays on top of all the laws across the nation for all of our franchisees, who we call our strategic partners. That's another uh, point we'll talk about in a minute, being a strategic partner. Okay. But the reason I'm saying that is um, we will address COVID today because I think COVID is the elephant in the room for a lot of people. And I want to make sure that you know that we are very on top of it and that our risk management department has been extraordinarily helpful with our offices from coast to coast on staying on top of all the laws and, you know, and everything going on with it. So we do have a lot of open territory, as you can see. Um, we are very eager to go into some states that we're not in, but to be frank about it, we're not trying to be the largest staffing firm in the world or in the US. What we care, we don't have to be everywhere, but wherever we are, we want to be the finest. That's the point. Oh, uh, that's important. Yes. So if you'll please go to the next slide. Our mission statement, um, we came up with our mission statement together with our strategic partners, our franchisees, and it's to, con to consistently provide client experience focused on what they value most. Now, they means the clients. And it means the people that we put to work. You know, so many times in life, we get all wrapped up in what we want to accomplish, but this yeah. is about our clients. And so we live and breathe this. And we don't want to just, you know, be good at what we do. We want to be the best that we can be for them and to continually improve. Next, That's please. Important. That's a lot of awards. <laughs> well, this is how we measure what we just talked about, how we're doing. Uh, with our clients and with the people that we place. And so Net Promoter Score is such an important uh, tool to use. It's a third-party survey. There are many companies that you're very uh, familiar with that have um, wonderful reputations and for great service and customer loyalty. And we're, I'm, I'll point that out to you in the next slide. But first, I'd like to, to show you that we have won Best of Staffing for so many years in a row uh, less than 2% of the industry in the U.S. has earned best of staffing one single time. And we have, uh, yes. And so, and you have to be in the top 2%, by the way, to win the award. So um, we have uh, accomplished it every single time, the whole time that we've been doing this uh, for um, tw over 12 years. And to win the Diamond Award, you have to win five years in a row. If you miss a year, forget it. You have to start over. Start over. <laughs> start over. And we've won it every single time. In fact, we need to update this slide because we now have seven diamonds on both sides. And there's uh, no other staffing company um, in that's commercial staffing that places the type of individuals that we do, clerical, administrative, light, industrial. You know, in other words, they're not placing doctors or marine biologists. Um, in the U.S. that does over $100 million that has won Diamond Awards, as many as we have on both sides, nobody even close. So let's take a look at the next slide and see what it's all about. So it's embraced by many companies that you recognize. I'm sure you see those. We're up at the level of Nordstrom's. Um, we're higher than almost everybody on this page, except Costco. And, and we're, we're right on the toes of Nordstrom and we're, and we're not far from Costco. But these are companies that are very famous. So, you know, we take a, a lot of pride in this, but it's, it's, it's work, it's hard work. We live it every day, we breathe it. Um, you know, so if anyone wants to learn more about Net Promoter Score, I would encourage you to read The Ultimate Question written by Fred Reichel. Uh, together with Harvard uh, Business School, they put together Net Promoter Score. So next. 
So staffing, what about staffing? Talanda, I love it that you said that so many people don't ask about staffing. Now, I will say that right now I'm getting more people that ask about it because of what's happening, you know, with employment right now. But, you know, over my 40 years in this business, rarely does anybody walk in to, you know, or start working with a consultant and say, hey, I want to buy a staffing company. <laughs> in fact, usually it's that when you recommend it, they're like, what? Staffing company? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not in HR or, you know, I've mm-hmm. never thought about that. And, you know, I want to, you know, whatever. So um, usually they start at, I'm at the bottom of their interest list, <laughs> but guess Maybe what? Maybe not bottom, but close. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I would say, have a conversation. Let's have the first conversation so you can really learn what it's all about. Because almost every single strategic partner in our system said the same thing in the beginning and look where they are now, happy and successful. So next. Now, a lot of people have this perception that what we do is we target the great big international companies and that we get these huge contracts. That's not where the money is. The uh, big international companies that have national contracts, um, they have big volume, but it's very low pricing. It's very low gross margin, and it's difficult to make a lot of money um, doing it that way if you're an individual franchisee in a market. The way to make money in our model and in our industry is to be in a franchise and to target small to medium-sized companies who greatly value our service, need us, and don't have the resources that great big companies have. And so that is where the money is. (laughs) You know, it's also where the satisfaction is because they are directly impacted by how well we do for them. You know, if the person shows up and does a good job, they're directly impacted much more than a great big company if a person does it. Very so, true. right. So next slide, please. Um, I did fail to mention from looking at that, that we are targeting uh, companies that are essential industries. In fact, we've been doing business. The majority of our business are essential industries and always have been, which has really helped us. Um, you know, over my years in the industry, I have watched, you know, the economy, you know, be great and then go down and then recover. And, you know, we've all been through it, you know, through life. And this chart really shows you how the industry does um, in downturns. Our industry feels it first. We're really a forerunner of the economy because we're in thousands of industries and companies. And so we feel it first. We go down first, but we often don't go down nearly as much as a lot of other industries. And we come out a lot quicker. And we go higher than we were before the downturn. I mean, look I at this chart, it's cool, right? And you can see that our industry keeps going higher and higher and higher. And so um, it's, it's enormous. Um, it's, it's, uh, the, this 150 billion is not even where we are now. We're now up over 170 billion. Uh, but this is a third party organization that releases these numbers you know, after downturn. So I can't wait to see what it is after this, this one that we're in now. So next. The type of individuals that we place are temporary, temp to hire, and direct hire. And you can see on this chart that we place a lot of people in light industrial jobs and that we place people in clerical and accounting as well. So we place people um, that are in high demand from a lot of different industries. It's not that we just segment into one industry um, because we want to be available to all different types of businesses across the board because almost everyone hires at least clerical accounting and bookkeeping. Um, But the light industrial is a very large, and in fact, it's helped us enormously through COVID. Um, In COVID, um, I want to share with you that we turned the corner in mid-May of 2020. Um, We didn't go down nearly as much as many other industries. And we started going back up um, during that timeframe, and we have been going up ever since. And everyone went on lockdown. I know, I know. So uh, here's how we did it. First of all, um, the majority of our clients are essential industries. If you think about it, if you look at the 65% light industrial, you know, all those products everybody needed at the grocery store and and whatnot, (laughs) um, you know, that we're, temps are involved in making them, packaging them, you know, doing something with them. And so um, that's one thing. But we also, from a headquarters point of view, 
um, you know, purchased information on the essential industries, provided that to all of our territories, and, you know, to go get them, whether they were had touched them yet or not, or were doing business with them or not. We just gave them a friendly uh, nudge, you know, let's go get the others. And, it, and that worked very, very well. Plus our risk management department and our marketing department worked very diligently through COVID um, to provide uh, helpful information to our strategic partners. So we had weekly meetings um, with our offices with a game plan, you know, helping um, them to know what the laws and regulations were in their specific markets, because it's different from state to state. Um, the risk management department did that and just keeping everybody up to date because our, our clients who are small to medium sized clients don't have the ability to have, a, you know, a law firm, uh, you know, a labor uh, lawyer uh, all the time to do that. So we did it. And then also our marketing department had marketing materials and pieces that directly applied to this, um, that we did uh, a lot of different campaigns as well as guest speakers uh, to help our offices. So, so you guys gave um, a lot of support during this COVID. We did. We did indeed. Okay. And, um, and our, our strategic partners had this upbeat attitude of, because they know that, you know, they knew that the boom was coming, that we would be a part of it. And, but we gave them a big head start, you know, to really get out there ahead of a lot, a lot of our competition. That's so, very nice. You know, I'll tell you what, um, it's, it, our, our, this sounds corny in today's world, but we really view our strategic partners as our family and we're very um, helpful to each other and we're, we all realize we're in this together. I don't think that sounds corny at all. I think people are actually turning a corner and looking for more of that. They are looking, you know, what is going to, to hold through downturns, whether it's a COVID or economic and where am I gonna feel like I have the support that I need? Exactly. Yeah. So, so that's what we did. And, you know, we, we put our money up to do it and we hired motivational speakers even. I mean, we did so many things to help them, but, but it wasn't just all of us. It was our strategic partners getting, you know, they, they instead of having, you know, like the fight or flight syndrome, you know, where you just kind of the, you know, you run away or you freeze. They really got, they really went for it and they were upbeat and optimistic. And, and I really have to take my hat off to them. They're fantastic. That's wonderful. So, next slide. Okay. So this is the opening model. So uh, a strategic partner opens up um, as the head of the team. They are the CEO, obviously an owner of their company, but they're also a sales manager. They're a very hands-on team leader and coach. So their time is kind of split 50-50. Um, about 50% of the time, they are working with their sales rep who's out in the field. So you can see on this chart, there's an account manager, an outside salesperson who's out there selling, mm -hmm. you know, all day long. In COVID, we've been doing things, um, you know, virtually as well. Um, so they're working with the sales rep and the, the owner is the face of the business with their clients. Um, and, and so they're, they're coaching and, and working with them. The other 50% of the time, they're in the office working with their other two employees who do the recruiting and, you know, do the um, interviewing and making decisions about, you know, who we would send out, you know, that there are requirements they have to meet, you know, to be a good worker that we would recommend and to have good references and, and so on and so forth. So they're working with them and also coaching the team to market the people that we do have to pick up the phone and call companies that we know hire people with their skills and experience. So that's what the owner's role is. Now it grows as, as they evolve. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. And you'll see that, you know, really uh, where they want to end up is with a team of maybe six or seven people. Now uh, we have offices that have, you know, 12, 15 people, you know, and, and so that, you know, they really believe in investing in their business, but the business grows and they can expand into a couple of specialty divisions that we have. One is Pride Staff Financial, where we go head to head with companies like Account Temps and Robert Half. And we also have a division, a new division called GA Rogers and Associates, which is higher level permanent placement. But, and, and we don't charge for that. To, to, it is part of their franchise agreement, but they have to qualify for it because we don't want them going out and representing themselves as a specialty in a certain niche until they have a firm foundation in their business. And that way it will catapult them uh, at a quicker rate when they do it. So and how long does that take? It, it depends on the office, usually at least a year okay. to qualify for it. 
but they can place permanent individuals and they can place accounting and bookkeeping individuals from day one, but they cannot have the specialty division where they're going out representing themselves is only placing that and, and you know, charging more for it, All right? So this franchisee up here, I mean, do many people that end up um, getting awarded and accepting a franchise with you, do they leave their positions if they're currently working? Do they leave their jobs or their companies where they're at? No, thank you. That's a great question. It's kind of a twofold question. Yeah. Number one, uh, you know, when you said that you're dating the franchise, right? Yeah. You're dating each you're other. Casually dating. We say that we want to have a monogamous. Yes, we casual dating. We want to have a monogamous marriage <laughs> with our strategic partner. They they cannot have another job or own another business. Um, we want somebody who is all in. Okay. Because, okay, because and and they will do so much better. Uh, than someone who is just, you know, has their finger in it or their toe in it or, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, we want somebody who's all in. So um, you, uh, the second part of that question is, do we have people resign from their jobs to do it? And the answer is yes. In fact, during COVID, two come to my mind immediately. Um, we had a senior vice president at Wells Fargo who had a very high level job. He resigned his job in COVID, open during COVID. We had another executive with Deloitte. Um, who resigned his job during COVID, had a stay-at-home wife, two little babies, you know, it's the sole bread, breadwinner, uh, resigned his job and that's, opened that's up COVID. a calculated COVID. risk. I beg your pardon? That's a calculated risk. It is indeed. But, you know, even when it's not COVID, we have people resign their jobs. Um, so, you know, we get a mix. Some people, you know, um, want to leave corporate. Um, some are just tired of corporate. Some have always had a dream to own a business and some people have been downsized and they're just tired of that happening to them and they want to take control of their lives. So we have a mix of all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. And that's, that's why we got involved in franchising 12 years ago. So, yeah. Indeed. So next, please. <laughs> so I here's a little ahead of you there. <laughs> no, it's great. Okay. So here's what I would encourage people to ask themselves, right? If they're thinking about, is this right for me? And for you to be able, to Londa, to be able to determine, you know, are they right for us? And by the way, you and your company do a great job of it. So thank you. But they have to have an engaging personality. You know, um, it, you have to be the type of person that people like instantly. Um, it doesn't mean you have to be a big talker, you know, but it means that you're warm, you're engaging, you're real, you're approachable. You know, it, it, and, and we all have different personalities and that's what makes the world go round. That's what makes life fun. And not every business is right for everybody, but this is for someone who is engaging and that people tend to gravitate toward. They also have to have a positive attitude about sales. Um, they do not have to have sales experience. We can teach people how to sell and how to be a sales manager. We have great training, leadership training, sales training, operational training, ongoing training, you name it. We got training galore. But what we cannot train people to do is to have the right inner stuff that they have to have. So down at the very bottom of this list, it says you have to have grit. I love that word. You got to have grit. You know, you can't be afraid to pick up a phone and call somebody you don't know. You can't be afraid to walk into a business where you don't know anybody. You just, you can't be afraid to do that. That's not how we totally do it. We have a, a very sophisticated sales process um, that is over time building a relationship with our clients, but it all starts with approaching people that you don't know. So that's important. And, and they can't train and, and coach up a sales rep if they're afraid to do it themselves. <laughs> so that's very important. So we talked about the full-time fully. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Look at me going ahead of your, <laughs> ahead of your <laughs> slide. <laughs> and they have to embrace systems and strategies and techniques. You know, there are people that are just pure entrepreneurs. If somebody's a pure yeah. entrepreneur, they want to develop everything themselves. And we're not looking for robots. So we're not looking for the opposite extreme of that. We're looking for someone who is like a vice president of operations, a general manager, a vice president of sales or marketing. Um, they don't have to have human resources experience because we have a very robust uh, human resources department that, that provides all that information. Um, but we are looking for someone who has developed people and understands business. So they'll have more credibility with the clients and with their team and have a much higher likelihood of success. So next page. The investment level is this wide range, right? So how could you be at the bottom? How could you mm -hmm. be at the top? 
So the way you can be at the bottom is if you're in a very small market, let's imagine you're in Tupelo, Mississippi, which is a charming town. And so, and expenses, right? <laughs> and expenses are a lot less. It could be that you're a veteran and so you get a 40, I mean, a 50% discount off our $40,000 franchise fee. It could be that the, the um, landlord does all the build out. It could be that your furniture, you bought really great used furniture. You know, you're at the low end of everything. Um, the high end would be if you're in a very, very expensive market, um, you know, like Manhattan or uh, LA, somewhere like that, San Francisco, um, and you didn't get a break on anything <laughs> cost-wise. <laughs> um, but included in that number is the franchise fee of forty thousand um, dollars, as well as the startup capital, uh, which would be to rent the space. Um, it's typically a retail space about 1,400 square feet, like a strip center where maybe you have a tax service next door, something like that, for signage and visibility, convenient to your, your workforce. Um, and then the furniture, signage, uh, equipment, you know, which is the computers and, and printer and that sort of thing and phones. So that really takes them to around about, you know, 90 to 100,000 in total um, to be ready to open the doors. And the rest of that capital is working capital money that they have to invest in the business and you know pay the bills until the business is cash flowing on its own. So for anywhere America, I would say it's somewhere in the middle, but um, you know, due to economic circumstances, um, I you know that are going on in the world right now, even though the staffing industry is flourishing, I still would rather be conservative. So I'd say be at the upper two thirds of the range, probably if you're in what I call anywhere America, right? So, um, you know, we want you to have nine months of working capital um, and that is all built into this. Um, it is important that you know that an SBA loan is not available and it has nothing to do with our industry not being a great industry or Pride Stuff being a great, great company, it's that the SBA will not grant the, uh, will grant the loan um, to a franchisee in our business if the franchisor, us, is the employer of record of the temps, which is a tremendous advantage to a, a, a franchisee because we carry all the payroll for all the temps and the taxes and the insurances and we handle the Affordable Care Act and, and the work comp and we're the employer of record. The claims are filed against us. We do the billing, we do the collecting, we, you know, we do all those things. So it would be a killer to not have that. So what most people do is the ROBS program unless they have the money themselves you know, in their, um, their accounts or you know, their investments. But most people do the ROBS, which is a fabulous program, and our franchisees will attest to it. Most of it do it. Yeah, and so if anybody sense. wants to learn about the ROBS program, that is something I can introduce them to as well for our finance partners. So I, you, you made the term cash flow, and I'm sure going through a lot of people's mind listening to this is, well, tell us how much I can make. Well, the um, biggest question we always get, right? <laughs> of course. Who wouldn't want to know that? Absolutely. Who wouldn't? So let me say this, we have an item 19, and those of you who don't know what an item 19 is, I'm sure that Alonda will very uh, well coach you on it, but uh, not all franchisors, I mean, franchisors are not required to put anything in their item 19. It's the one section of the FDD they're not required to do, but we do. <laughs> Ironing. <laughs> and we do. And, you know, um, I, you, you'll be able to learn a lot from our item 19. It does show you um, our high, median, low, um, average uh, sales volumes, the gross margin, uh, the share that goes to the franchisee, um, you know, our average pricing, um, you know, the average take per hour. It shows a lot of information in there. Um, however, we do not show you how much money that you would make because we do not require our strategic partners to, sh to share their actual earnings with us. Some franchisors do, we do not. Um, however, uh, our validation is very good. The strategic partners are more than happy to talk with people. And we have a pro forma template that you'll be able to use to be able to figure it out. It's not hard to figure out, but if you are the type of person where you struggle with it, uh, sometimes I find that people do every now and then, not that often, um, but um, the strategic partners will help you. They all went through it themselves as well, and they'll share their stories with you. So you won't have any trouble finding that out. 
Okay. That's wonderful. It's a, it's a good word of mouth advertising almost. If you have the good strategic partners talking very good about the brand, that, that says a lot right there. It does indeed. And, and what has more credibility, right? Mm -hmm. They do. So we're going to give you the numbers, you know, our national numbers, they're good. They look, you know, and they keep getting better. Um, in, in fact, uh, I, I didn't mention this about COVID, um, about, you know, how we did, but um, at the end of the year, we ended up almost where we were the year before, uh, which is incredible to make up, you know, the, the first couple months that fast. And so um, it, it, so the numbers are good, but you need to validate it with our strategic partners. And uh, a lot of franchisors do not put all the names of their uh, franchisees on their website. On our mm -hmm. website, pridestaff.com, under locations, we have all of our locations and all of the owner's names. And many of them have their backgrounds on there as well. So we're an open book. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. All right. So next, please. So here's what I would ask you to do. Please take a good look at Pride Staff because I think you'll be pleased with what you find. We're a wonderful organization. And if we're not right for you, I promise you that Talanda will help you find the perfect business that is right for you. So thank you for letting me go through this presentation, Talanda. Thank you. No, this was great. I think you gave some good information on what people can expect. And you know, if anybody wants to, I think I asked most of the common questions that you get. Um, was there anything that maybe we didn't cover or I didn't ask that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but, but if there's anything well, anyone's thinking of, reach out to me and we can certainly, you know, get the answers or have you talk to Paula. I, I will throw one thing out that, that you mentioned uh, early yes. um, in your questions is about, you know, what happens, you know, when you are ready to move on? Because some people join us and they say, you don't have a five-year plan. Oh, the um, exit plan. Right, right, exit plan. Yeah. Some, some people say, well, I have a five-year plan. Like I want to build it up. I want to sell it for X amount of money. And then I want to go do something different because there are people that are like that that they just, they just get energized from doing some, you know, changing, you know, and then there are people like me who stay in the, the same thing doing it forever, <laughs> right? And so you get your groove and you love it, you know, and do anything else. And, and we have, we have that and everything else in between. So, um, you know, if, if, if someone wants the first one, um, we'll help them do that. We'll help them put a plan. Here's what you have to do to get it to the level you want to do and, and, and to sell it for the amount that you want to make. And we'll help them you know, we'll plan, plan a roadmap for them, exactly. to accomplish it, right? Um, and if someone wants to keep it forever, wonderful. Some people want to turn it over to their children. Which I was going to say a make. legacy business, yeah. A legacy business, yes. Um, some people want to, um, you know, sell it. You know, when they do, we help them sell it. We're happy to do that and you help us do that. But some people um, want to expand and open more units. Now, what they find when they get into this is our territories are so big um, that they often do not expand because they can keep growing their business. We don't have a single franchise in our system that has maximized their market, not one. Our very top offices in the system will tell you they barely scratch the surface. And so, and, the, and if you do want to expand, the territories are so big that you can usually open another office in your same territory. So it really helps people that have big plans but you know, we understand that everybody's different. Everybody has a different desire and we're here to help you accomplish that, whatever it is. Sounds wonderful. Well, if anybody would like to be introduced or learn more about this, um, you can reach out to me. You can reach out on the website. You can schedule a casual call um, by the book online link here on my website. And we can certainly begin a conversation and then introduce you to Paula. So thank you for joining us today. I appreciate your time and uh, have a good rest of your day. Thank you, everyone who listened. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Talanda, so much for thank your professionalism you. and your assistance in growing our brand. Have a, have a wonderful day. You too.